Uh, welcome to lesson three of industrial automation and control. In this lesson, which is entitled energy savings with variable speed drives, we are going to explain and demonstrate that for a for a kind of application which is uh, very predominant in the industry, very common, how uh, what are the firstly we are going to see what are the uh, various kinds of uh, flow control applications that is the application that we are trying to consider. So, it flow can be of gas or liquid. So, accordingly we have either uh, what are known as fans or blowers or we have pumps. Fans, blowers and pumps constitute an enormous uh, a very significant fraction of the loads which are driven by motors and motors which consume a large amount of electrical power in the industry. So, they are very common and common applications and very significant from the energy point of view. So, we are going to see that in such applications how flow is to be controlled and then uh, we are also going to see that if you flow is typically controlled by driving a pump by a motor, uh, but if you drive a pump by a motor then it will drive a certain amount of air let us say. Uh, if you have a pump it could be water. Now the demand for this air or water is not the same all the time. So, the flow has to be controlled. Now, there are, so firstly, how do we, when we connect a machine to the pump, what is the amount of flow that is established? That depends on the pump characteristics, that depends on the uh, machine characteristics. So, we are going to see that how when you connect a pump or a fan with a so called load how is the operating point established, what will be the pressure, what will be the flow. It is actually much like you know establishing an operating point when you connect a battery with a circuit or a load right. So, we are going to see that and we will see that depending on how we can vary this operating point, see we, we have to vary this operating point because we need to vary the flow. Now, the flow can be varied by various ways of varying the operating point and it is, so some of these ways are maybe very simple, but maybe may not be efficient in from an energy point of view, while others may involve more complex technology, but possibly would be more energy saving. So, we are going to look at uh, two of the most common techniques and show that how their energy characteristics are going to be different. In fact, that will motivate the next few lessons in this course that we are going to have on uh, industrial drives. Probably this lesson would show why industrial drives are, uh, I mean show at least one side of the story that why uh, variable speed drives are, are such an important thing. I mean such an important technology in industrial automation and control. So, so finally, we would also uh, see in this in the in the course of discussion that when to choose what type of flow control or drive right. It is not that you always energy saving is the all important criterion. Uh, so, we will discuss a little bit on that. So, let us look at a basic uh, characteristic of a fan right. So, uh, here we are the fan is this, this is the intrinsic characteristic of the fan itself irrespective of what the load is. So, the fan actually develops a pressure at its outlet and also develops a certain flow. And this it develops when the fan is rotated at a certain speed. So, when we have plotted this curve, 
which is uh, which is whose one axis is flow and the other axis is pressure. So, it sh shows the pressure, pressure is you know somewhat like voltage and flow is somewhat like current. So, in that sense it is it is like since we are uh, many of us are, are electrical engineers. So, this is some somewhat like a V i characteristics of a battery or an energy source. And we must remember that this curve is drawn at some speed at a given speed of rotation. So, if the speed of rotation will is 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 changed then the then this characteristic will shift up and down actually it will you will get a family of characteristics with decreasing speed right. So, this is the characteristics of the fan as such. Now, if this fan is now connected to a load right the load means that it could be various things for example, uh, typically fans are used in uh, furnaces. So, in, in the furnace typically if you go to a power station uh, you will find that you have big boilers and these boilers are heated by furnaces and these furnaces have two huge fans one is called an induced draft fan another is called a forced draft fan. So, these are you know like I mean a furnace is like a like a like a chula. So, you need to blow water uh, blow uh, air into it for combustion. So, these fans actually blow that air and the induced draft fan actually I mean sucks out the uh, after combustion air most from full of carbon dioxide. So, these are so, so this so it is the furnace which is the load. So, if you connect the fan to the furnace then at a certain speed of the fan a certain operating point or a certain pressure flow will be established. So, so basically how do we get that? So, we Uh, this is a this is this is a fan characteristics which will which will come back to a little later. This this is a little complicated. Actually, basically, okay, let's have a look at it. Basically, what is being done is that this is this actually gives a family of curves, right? So on this axis, on this axis, you have this CFM means cubic feet, which is an unit of volume per minute. So, this is nothing but volume flow rate. So, this axis is Q right and this is total pressure in inches of in inches of water column right. So, basically this is pressure or P. Now, so, so the so the so, so you see part of the fan characteristic is shown and you can see that a family of curves are shown. So, what are these family of curves? So, basically the various operating points for example, these are if you see these constant lines I will draw it here. So, for example, these these line this line it starts with this number 500 and here it is written rpm. So, which means that this is the if, if the fan is made to rotate at 500 rpm then the pressure flow characteristic it follows this curve. Similarly, you have a family of curves for, for various speeds. On the other hand, look at these dotted lines. So, this dotted line, this dotted line it says 150. So, this is a these are constant horsepower lines. So, these are constant horsepower lines. So, if you operate it along this curve then you have a you have you or you always spend 150 horsepower similarly you have a number of curves right. Similarly, you can have uh, 
efficiency constant efficiency characteristics say this 70 percent line this is the 80 percent line and so on. So, basically this curve shows that if the fan is operated at various speeds what are going to so basically pressure flow characteristics with something constant either the speed is constant or the energy is constant so, so that you can conveniently find operating points and in fact we will use this curve later on to find out to actually compute the energy savings right. So, having understood this let us move on and we will we will we will come back to this curve in a while. Yes. So, here now we come back to how an operating point is established. So, you see just like remember that when we when we computed operating points in our circuits courses we drew what is known as a load line right. So, on the other hand you have a load has a certain characteristic means that if you want to create a certain amount of flow through that load in this case may be through the furnace you need to create a certain amount of pressure difference right. Suppose you take a pipe then to then to be able to create a certain amount of flow through the pipe you need to create a certain amount of pressure difference across the two ends of the pipe. So, that is the characteristic of the pipe that to create a given amount of flow how much pressure difference is needed and typically it turns out that it follows a square law basically that occurs because of Bernoulli flows when you have what is known as turbulent flow that means when the when the when the flow velocity is high then uh, there is a there is a law called Bernoulli's law which we are not going to now from which you can derive that the pressure flow relationships through any constriction if the flow velocity is sufficiently high that is if the Reynolds number is so high that the flow can be called turbulent then typically the pressure flow relationship is quadratic. So, the load typically follows such an equation with some constant k. So, if it is a narrow constriction this value of k is going to be high if it is a open constriction value of k is going to be low and so. So, if you connect such a load across the pump then they will they will intersect and this is the operating point. So, this is the operating point. So, immediately if you if you connect this is the flow and this is the pressure which will be which are going to be established. So, the pressure which will be established if you connect this pump with this load this flow will be established and this pressure will be established right. So, now let us talk about varying the flow because we need to depending on the load characteristics for example, if your electrical energy demand decreases then you need to uh, reduce the rate of combustion. So, you need to reduce the flow air flow into the furnace right. So, how do you do that? So, typically it, 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 it happens this is a this is a typical case it is we are, we are we are calling it a system load profile which means that the system to which we have connected the load how do we what do you mean by the load we mean by by the load we mean flow rate. So, you see that this is the this is the uh, demand a typical demand profile. So, it says that this is let us say uh, let us say that this is the maximum flow is 100 that can occur that we are calling 100 percent. So, since we must have kept some amount of safety margin so probably maximum flow uh, hardly ever occurs maybe does not occur at all or, or maybe occurs for a very small time. So, most of the time that is the flow is actually between you see about uh, 45 45 to 70 percent. So, this maximum time the flow stays within 45 to 70 percent 
of the design flow rate. Similarly, it stays at uh, it stays between 40 and 45 percent for so that is about you know 11 point something this percent of the time. So, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, so about more than 50 percent of the time it stays within this flow range. And similarly, it stays within 25 to 30 percent for 1 percent of time and 30 to 35 percent about 4 percent of time and so on. So, this basically shows that in the of the total operational time, let us say a day, what I mean, what is the loading? If you take a loading of say 40 to 45 or 50 to 50, a particular loading level, for how much does it stay? What 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 percent of the time? So there are some things which are important to note here. Firstly, note that the fan size must be selected based on the 100 percent consideration. So because the fan, for however small time the 100 percent demand comes, if you 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 if if you select the equipment such that that demand will be met then the fans, fan size will be selected by the 100 percent, but most of the time it will not operate at it will not operate at that level. So, rather it will operate most of the time at half level and it will also operate at very low levels for a very small amount of time. So, this is a typical load characteristic. Now, let us see what happens. So, we need to shift this operating point right all the time. So, let us see now what happens if we shift the operating points. So, this is summarized. So, it says that it this is like you know roughly suppose because we are going to see an example. So, suppose in our example 100 percent CFM, CFM means again basically flow cubic feet per minute. This is uh, CFM means Q. So, 100 percent flow stays for 10 percent of the time, 80 percent flow stays for 40 percent of the time, 60 percent for 40 percent of the time and 40 percent 10 percent of the time. Imagine such a case, okay. then now let us see that what are the various ways of controlling. One of the, one of the easiest way of controlling a uh, air flow is to switch on and switch off a fan. You know this happens regularly if you see a if you see a home air conditioner you must have noticed that the uh, the fan I mean the uh, the in the in that case the compressor switches on and off right. So, so it is a kind of on off control. So, so, in a similar way if you want to control flow then you can also switch off and switch off and uh, switch on the fan. So, what will happen if you do that? So, you see if you switch on the fan, suppose the flow rate will rise for a little time, then it will fall again and then you will switch it on and then switch it off. So, you will be able to establish an average flow and this average will actually depend on what is known as the duty ratio. So, this is on, this is off. So, basically the average value will be uh, or rather actually what will happen is that if you it will, it will not rise slowly because the time constant will be fast enough rather it will be like this. So, for the moment you switch it on some flow will be established the moment you switch it off that flow will fall this is an approximation actually the flow will rise fast and it will flow fall fast. So, if you approximate it as a, as a square wave. So, again if you switch it on and switch it off. So, basically the the if 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 this is the flow rate q max then the average flow rate will be given by q max into t on by t on plus t off. This is very easy to know this is t on and this is t off. So, the average flow you can change by simply increasing T on by simply changing T on and T off ok. This is a this, this is probably the simplest way you you need nothing you need you only need the motor and the pump uh, the motor and the fan you anyway need, but as far as equipment for driving the motor is concerned you need nothing you just need to switch on the motor and switch off the motor at a certain 
uh, frequency or a certain rate. For that also you need some equipment, but that is very simple. But this is hardly ever used because of the fact that there will be flow pulsations and you know these kind of fans are typically used for industrial processes, we need, we use, use them for cooling, for, for things like combustion. So what will happen in the furnace for some time suddenly lot of air will come. So when a lot of air will come, if there is, see what we want to do is we, when we want to have, we are giving fuel and we are giving air. So we, for, so to get the maximum thermal efficiency from the fuel, we need to have a fuel air ratio, perfect fuel air ratio such that full combustion of the uh, fuel uh, will take place. So if you put more air, then also air is wasted and if you put less air, then the fuel will not burn. So, so in other words, that, that pulsating value of flow is not good for combustion flow control. So similarly, another major application for flow control is for cooling. So it is not good to, so, so if you sometimes if you send coolant and sometimes if you do not send it, then the temperature on the equipment will be pulsating and this temperature may affect reaction rates, it may, it may, it, it may cause thermal stress on the equipment. So, so in general for industrial flow control problems, we cannot tolerate such pulsations. So therefore this, this, this on off control method is not good. So we go for other methods. So what are the other methods? So another very simple method is, so on off control is the simplest of control, there is, temp, there is going to be temperature fluctuation, basically flow fluctuation will cause, may cause, may cause temperature fluctuation. Uh, sometimes for home applications it is used when you have less load and you have a large volume. So if you, uh, so there is a lot of, you know, you know, thermal capacitance, so little bit of flow variation will not be felt because of large volumes of room. So I mean sometimes for, uh, for home applications, uh, ventilation, uh, HVAC applications, this kind of control is used, but generally not. Uh, not used industrially. The next control which is used is called the outlet damper control for the fan. So, so outlet damper means basically a damper means you know it is like a set of vanes you know just like this, uh, you know sometimes uh, on the uh, you must have seen what is what are those called they are, they are uh, when you put something on the windows to, to keep out the sun. Uh, so you know they, they are there you can change gaps, you can, you can move them, either you can keep them like this or you can keep them like this so that some uh, air can flow. So basically dampers are also similar things. So what you do is you put a damper at the outlet of the fan. So basically the damper puts a resistance and does not allow air to flow clearly. So by that you, 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 you try to reduce the flow. That is a very, it is a, it is a relatively simple method of flow control because the because the con the controls required for uh, creating a particular resistance in the damper or creating a particular damper angle is actually very simple. But what is the third method? The third method and and which is the which is the very energy saving method is variable speed fan control. So you don't put any damper, but you rather change the speed of the fan and reduce it when you require less flow. But for that you require a variable speed drive of the motor and that is uh, much more sophisticated technology is required especially when the motor is large compared to uh, you know dampers and or valves. Uh, 